here, take my money, this is yours, because I was too lazy to look at the actual numbers and find the right investing decision for me. Hey guys, this is Bradley Talks Money, I'm Bradley, and today I'm gonna give you the truth about CDRs and explain to you why personally I'll never own them. I've seen a lot recently people asking, what are CDRs? What's the benefit that investing in CDRs versus the American counterparts? How does this make sense? How is it gonna affect my investing? So I wanna break that down for you today. So CDRs, or Canadian Depository Receipts, are a investing tool created by CIBC in 2021, are a way for Canadians to invest in US companies uh, using their home currency. The way that they do this is they bundle up a basket of, say, Tesla stocks, and you can buy essentially fractional shares of Tesla stocks using Canadian currency. Now we see it all the time, people asking, should I buy the Canadian one? Should I buy the American one? What's the difference? Most investing tools that are created by funds such as Vanguard or iShares or BMO, they have management expense ratios, and these are typically for ETFs. CIBC did something a little tricky. You have to dig into the website quite a bit to find this, but they've actually said on CDRs, there's an on average 0.6% hedging fee. So essentially what that means is because the stocks are American, Tesla, Amazon, Apple, they all trade in American dollars and you are buying them as Canadian for CIBC to be able to exchange your funds and they take a small percentage based on the spread. So what does this mean? Well, it means that you're going to be paying a fee. Now the reason that I don't like CDRs personally is because I have such a long time horizon still with my investing and just like compound interest is our biggest asset when it comes to investments, uh, compound interest can actually tax us pretty hard too when we have fees that we're paying. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. Let's look at the numbers a little bit and I'm gonna explain to you and show you why it doesn't make sense for me and why it probably doesn't make sense for a lot of you either. So what I wanna do for you today is look into what these fees actually mean and how they can impact your holdings. Let's take a hypothetical situation where we want to buy shares of Apple and we have $10,000 to do so. Our two options are to buy the CDR or to pay a brokerage and exchange our Canadian dollars into American dollars. Well, simple, for example, we're going to pay that 1.5% exchange fee and we're going to end up with $9,850. Now we're going to compare that to our CDR where we have the full $10,000. In our scenario, we're not gonna take into account the current exchange rate because we can't predict the future, so it'd be hard to extrapolate what the end result would be. We're also gonna just set a flat 10% increase year over year just because it makes the numbers a little bit nicer. Now, if we look at the first five years here, you can see that it's actually more beneficial to hold the CDR than to exchange your money into USD and then convert it back into Canadian. Having to pay that 1.5 conversion fee twice is gonna hurt if our time horizon is so short. The longer we look out, the brighter this picture gets. After six years, you'll notice it's actually more profitable to hold the US and pay that conversion fee twice rather than holding the CDR. Now, I acknowledge that it's not very much, it's 0.3% essentially, but like I said, with a long time horizon on your investments, Let's scale this out and we'll see how this looks down the road. So you'll notice that after the 10th year of holding US funds versus CDRs, your difference is going to be about 2.5%. And if we look further into the future still, 15 years, we're at 5%. 20 years, we're going to be at 7%. 30 years, we're at 13%. And if you get all the way to 40 years, which is not unrealistic for an investor like me, with my type of time horizon, we're looking at a difference of almost 20%. In our example, that 20% after 40 years is equivalent to $75,000. And that was with a $10,000 principal investment. Now, I don't know about you, but after 40 years of investing, I don't want to have written a check to CIBC for $75,000 and say, here, take my money, this is yours, because I was too lazy to look at the actual numbers and find the right investing decision for me. 
I know that I have a long time horizon, so I know that the smart option is to invest in the US currency itself and the US stocks. A lot of people don't look into the numbers. A lot of people maybe don't even know about this hidden fee because they don't make it incredibly obvious when you uh, look into CDRs, but it can really add up. And we want to mitigate as many negative compounding interest factors into our investing as we can. Personally, I think I've made it pretty obvious. I don't like CDRs. I'm not going to invest in them because it doesn't fit my investing style or my investing needs. Now, that might not be true for you. You might have a much shorter time horizon. You might not have the funds available to buy a whole share of Apple or Amazon because they can get pretty expensive sometimes. Um, but personally, I think it's better just to save up and buy the real thing. So what are your thoughts? Do you like CDRs? Is it something that you would hold? Do you disagree with me? Did I get something wrong? Please let me know, leave it in the comments. I'd be very interested to know your opinions. Now, if you like the content, hit subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff. I'm going to be coming out with content around finances, investing, debt management, stuff like that, stuff that they don't teach you in schools. And I'm going to give you my opinions to hopefully help you set yourself up for the future because not enough people are doing that today. 